Hello, I'm Mark Barbour. I'm the executive director and founding curator of the International Printing Museum here in Carson, California, just south of downtown Los Angeles. We feature one of the largest collections of working antique printing presses in the country, if not the world. Uh, we love to keep them working, just as you're seeing here with this one. Uh, today is September 18th, otherwise known as Taipei Day, 0.918. And to celebrate that here at the museum, I thought I'd just give a little highlight of uh, some of the unusual platen presses that are in our collection. The one I was just working right here, everybody would know as your standard platen press. Um, most of them that are in existence would be Chandler and Price, C&P, 10 by 15, but this one is not. This is known as the California Reliable Jobber. This is the only platen press, one of the only platen presses made in California in the 19th century. It was made sometime around 1890, 1895, and it's based on your standard platen press of the 19th century, but it was made in San Francisco at Palmer and Ray, uh, the, one of the first successful Far West type foundries, and they also made printing equipment, including paper cutters, Washington hand presses, and platen presses. So, kind of a unique little little guy here. But the fun part of this is the connection that it has to the origins of the platen press. The platen press was essentially developed by a guy by the name of George Phineas Gordon in the 1860s. And George Gordon always said in his own commentary about his invention of the platen press, uh, he called his press the Franklin Press, the Franklin Jobber is what it was known as. That's because he credited Benjamin Franklin as having inspired him uh, to design and invent that printing press. Uh, we think he was probably uh, enjoying uh, the fruits of the vine uh, a little too heavily and was probably influenced by other things. Uh, it was not in a dream, but rather his inspiration for the platen press as we know it really came from another guy by the name of Stephen Ruggles. And we actually have one of the few surviving Ruggles presses, and it's here in the collection. This is known as the Ruggles Jobber, and this is from 1855. And Gordon actually did credit Ruggles at some point as having given him the inspiration for the platen press. Now, a platen is the flat surface that's going down on top of your type. What's fun about this one here is how this one operates. It was shipped in its own original crate. Unfortunately, we don't have that crate, but you were then instructed to mount the press onto the crate box. Uh, a wooden treadle there is attached to the flywheel. What you'll notice on the press here is that the rollers travel 360 degrees around the cylinder. Well, how does the machine keep the cylinder from moving? There's two of these arms. You can see one of them up here. And there's a secondary arm underneath on the right-hand side. So when the rollers come up, they will lift up one of these arms so that it can travel underneath that arm. This is where your ink would be spread out. And when this arm lifts up, the other arm would still be attached or holding on to a notch in the cylinder. Your type itself, we'll just rotate this way. You, you didn't even have to take your chase out of the press. You would turn it, lock it in place, put in your type, lock it in, bring it back into printing position. Also, as a card press, it was meant to print cards really fast. All you had to do is get the card in, and then the bottom gauge lifts up with a lever that is activated by a paw right here, and the card will drop down into a box. Right now, it lifts it. The card would drop in place. Quite an amazing little press. Very popular in its day. This one uh, I managed to acquire out of a gold mining town uh, in Amador County. This is off of what's known as Highway 49 in California. That's the gold area, uh, Jackson, California. And this press had been in the same 
company, the publisher uh, of this, it, it was transferred from publisher to publisher from the time it was acquired in 1859 until I acquired it from the last publisher in his living room and managed to get it out of his hands. There's probably about five of these that have survived in the world. The fun part was the actual newspaper that this was in. In California, the towns, of course, were all made out of wood. And for the third time in that decade, in the 1850s, a fire had begun on one side of town. So I like to say that you had a hot breakfast on that side of town. You certainly had a hot lunch in the middle of town as the fire continued. And then you had a nice dinner at the other end of town. So the fire ripped out all the buildings once again, including the printing shop at the Amador Ledger Dispatch was the name of the paper. And the printing equipment was destroyed. So the owner went to San Francisco, ordered new equipment. We have the name of the equipment dealer in San Francisco that he bought this from. Came back, started publishing the paper again, and was very proud about his new Ruggles printing press. So in a little ad for himself in the paper, he actually put a picture, or not picture, but a line drawing of the printing press, come down to the office and see the latest, greatest printing press, the Ruggles. His name was McMullen, uh, was the name of the publisher. At the outbreak of the Civil War, uh, McMullen, being a patriotic soul, uh, gathered together fellow miners and all that, became their captain and created a unit and uh, taught them how to shoot the gun straight, then marched out to the territory of New Mexico and participated in battles uh, for the Civil War. He left his newspaper in the hands of his two trusted employees who upon his departure from town, Mr. Payne and Mr. Henry, turned that newspaper into California's earliest Southern sympathetic newspaper, preaching against the evils of abolition, Lincoln and the North. And they had some uh, uh, quite audacious uh, editorials uh, in the paper at that time. That was a moment in California's state history, the only time that we were under uh, military law. And the army had orders to deal with seditious characters, such as these uh, publishers of the paper. They came in in the dead of night on their horses on a hill there in Jackson, the cemetery. They crouched down behind the tombstones, uh, you know, waited there with their horses until the crack of dawn, went into the center of town, rapped on the printer's door next door to the print shop, hauled these two souls off in shackles, padlocked the print shop doors with this press inside there, and they escorted Mr. Payne and Mr. Henry to Fort Alcatraz, where they had the privilege of bagging sand for the, for the Union Calvary all summer. And McMullen eventually came back and then continued the operation of his newspaper, and it continued. It's actually, I think, now the oldest uh, continuously published newspaper in California. So, so that's Ruggles Press right here, a very rare press. We're very proud to have this in. And then, uh, just a couple years ago, I managed to acquire this one after about a 15 to 20 year wait. That I found this in an equipment dealer's warehouse in New Jersey, Elizabeth, New Jersey. And when I saw it many, many years ago, 20 years ago, I, maybe it was even more than that, I knew what it was and it was just a machine that was in the, in the dust in the back of the, the warehouse with an unidentified 5x7 press was the only tag on it. Well, I noticed parts of this press and other things on it that this was a Ruggles press. And the dealer, who doesn't really make good deals, I couldn't tell him what he had. I just had to keep focused on the other machines in the warehouse. Eventually, uh, I had a chance to go in there to acquire a bunch of other machines. And once I hit a certain price point of buying a bunch of stuff, I said, well, you have some other machines around here. Um, oh, that one with the red tag on it. Uh, and I put together a group, and it was like the last one I threw in on the deal. And he literally almost gave it to me because uh, he didn't know what it was. And, but this is another card press, but it's hand cranked. Now, that the inking system would be up here, and that's missing right now. But it works off of the curved plate, which itself would move incrementally from one side to the next. You put your card in, and it would fall down into a box right down there. Again, a very rare early 1850s era printing press. So... George Gordon is inspired by Ruggles. 
So one of the earliest platen presses he developed was this one here. Again, a unique press that has survived. There are no, none others. This is known as Gordon's Alligator Press. This is from about 1858, 1860. We acquired this one from Nebraska uh, State Historical Society. Unfortunately, they managed to lose the flywheel. Uh, this is pictured, this press is pictured in James Moran's uh, book on the development of the printing press from the 15th century forward. So the rollers themselves would come up, get the ink off the disc at the top, and then come back down and ink it up again. The reason why it was called the alligator uh, was that the bed, the platen of the press stays fixed in position. And then this part of the press, the bed, actually comes forward for the printing. Whereas on a regular platen press, the platen moves up and your hand is, is naturally pushed out of the way. Well, on this one, it was known by the operators that when it was donated in 1900, to the Nebraska Historical Society, the last operator said he personally knew of three people who had their hands smashed on this machine. He was very happy to get rid of it at that time. But with your hands right here, the bed would descend not just, not just softly, but rather suddenly, like the bite of an alligator. So it was known as a very dangerous press in its time. But again, a rare and unique piece, one of a kind. Another one of a kind press is this one here. And this is from 1875. This is known as the Asteroid Jobber. We just acquired this one a couple years ago, and it is the most unique platen press I've ever come across. So when the ink rollers come up to ink up the type here, they're going to go up to the ink disc here, and so it's not a circular ink disc. It's not even a curved one, but as a rectangular disc, it will rotate one quarter of a turn each time. There's a mechanism in the back there that it, uh, which is a little hard to see on the camera here, but it just literally just turns it one quarter of a turn on there. And you do your printing on it. It actually prints beautifully. We, uh, one of our friends, Greg Walters, there's a video on there of this, on YouTube of this press in operation while he was printing on it during one of our events. So the other interesting thing on this one, the chase. If you'll notice on the chase, a trapezoid or non-parallel. I still have not figured out why that is, why the top is angled up on that. But that one's unique. And here's something else that's really rather, rather nifty. On a platen press, you have a lever off to the side to take it off impression. And usually what that does is it moves the platen away from the type gives you a quarter of an inch. So the press can still cycle, but it's not going to print on a sheet of paper. On the Asteroid Jobber, it's one of the only ones I've ever discovered that does this, instead of moving the platen, and the rollers in that case would continue eking up your type so that when you put a piece of paper back in there, it's going to be over inked. What this one does is it backs the bed off. So the bed goes forward or back. So right now it's in the reverse position, so it's off impression. And if you want to print, you just move that forward and the platen has never changed. That way you're not over inking your type. How's that for amazing? So we love, we have, we have dozens and dozens of, of very unique uh, platen printing presses. So a great celebration of Type High Day 918, the Platinum Presses here at the International Printing Museum.